Hello and welcome back to the MMA Bar. Today we're going to discuss the legendary rise of the one-time king of combat sports, Conor McGregor. All of his fights and his fall from the position he once was in the UFC and combat sports. Conor McGregor was one of the most dominant fighters in the history of UFC. Between his astonishing knockout power and notorious trash talk, McGregor rose to become the king of combat sports before announcing his retirement in March 2019. While it might appear as though McGregor was always meant for superstardom, his journey to the top of the fighting world started with humble beginnings. A two-division champion in UFC, McGregor was for a time considered the king of combat sports. But while McGregor took naturally to the superstar life, it wasn't something into which he was born. Today, we take a look at McGregor's rise to the top of the world. Conor McGregor was born on July 14, 1988 to parents Tony and Max. They claim he was born with clenched fists. McGregor would spend his youth in Crumlin, a suburb of Dublin. Once his interest in Manchester United gave way to an interest in fighting, he would train at the Crumlin Boxing Club. In Dublin, McGregor would meet his now longtime coach, John Kavanaugh. After going into one of Kavanaugh's gyms, McGregor beat up two of the best fighters there in a sparring session that he took a bit too seriously. Kavanaugh responded by pinning him and throwing heavy blows until Connor promised he was there for training and not for a street brawl. Uninterested in school, McGregor took to plumbing as trade and did what he could to make it a living for some time. There were times when he would work 12 hours days before heading to the gym to train as a fighter. It was around this time that he started dating his longtime girlfriend, Dee Devlin. When he gave up plumbing to train full-time, his parents disapproved of the decision, so much so, he and his father came to blows. He'll be sorry when I'm a millionaire, he told his father. I remember saying at 25 years of age, I will be a self-made millionaire, McGregor recalled. McGregor took part in his first MMA fight on March 8, 2008 for the London-based promotion Cage Warriors, defeating Gary Morris by TKO in the second round. He would go 4-2 through his first six fights before starting the winning streak that would take him to international fame. After his 4-2 start, Connor would win his next eight fights all within the first two rounds and become a two-division champion of Cage Warriors. Buzz continued to grow and he was eventually booked for his first fight with UFC. When Dana White narrated Connor's signature to the UFC, he said, the first time I met him, we flew him into Vegas and he and I went to dinner. And I was blown away by him, White said. When I got in my car, I called then UFC owner Lorenzo Fertitta and I said, let me tell you what, I don't know if this kid can fight but if he can throw a punch, this kid is going to be a huge superstar. On April 6, 2013, McGregor made his UFC debut against Marcus Brimage, winning by knockout in the first round. The win was not only his UFC debut, but later led to the first post to his now famous Instagram account. Just a week before that fight, he had picked up a welfare check for 188 euros to help him get by. But McGregor took home the prize for knockout of the night that night and the $60,000 bonus that came with it. Later in life, he would name his bout the 188 in memory of those checks. UFC president Dana White was immediately impressed with McGregor. McGregor's next fight was against Max Holloway, where he completely dominated the fight and won via unanimous decision. McGregor was in control of the fight and was able to show some skill on the floor as well as standing up. McGregor worked incredibly hard to recover from an ACL injury he suffered in the fight so as to get his career back on track and help achieve his goal of becoming a UFC champion. In July 2014, McGregor made his return to the Octagon where he fought Diego Brandao in his home country, Ireland the first time McGregor fought in a UFC main event. McGregor won the fight via TKO in the first round in front of 9,500 Irish fans. In the fight, McGregor showed the power he has in his punches and his ability to survive while on the floor. After almost a year out of the octagon, McGregor fully recovered and was able to knock out his opponent and win the performance of the night award. In the post-fight interview, McGregor said in front of the Irish crowd, We're not here just to take part, we're here to take over. 
and take over he did. After signing a new contract, McGregor's next fight was at UFC 178 against Dustin Poirier, the first time he fought on a card where there was a world championship fight. Going into the fight, it was the first time McGregor used mind games to get inside his opponent's head before the fight started. McGregor was predicting the first round knockout before the fight started which people thought was unrealistic. Poirier was McGregor's toughest opponent at this point and a first round knockout sounded improbable. As soon as the fight started, McGregor completely dominated the fight as he constantly connected shots with his left hand. The Irishman was able to get his opponent on the back foot and land a devastating left hook which helped end the fight. McGregor ended the fight inside the first round in less than two minutes. Post-fight, McGregor gave himself the nickname Mystic Mac for predicting the first round knockout. He was able to win the Performance of the Night award for the second fight in a row. McGregor was now targeting the UFC featherweight champion Jose Aldo for a title shot. First, McGregor had to fight Dennis Sever at the start of 2015. Winning the fight would mean that the Irish man would get a title fight and achieve his goal of becoming a UFC champion. Being his second main event fight, McGregor completely dominated the fight and completely outclassed Sever, winning via TKO in the second round. As soon as the referee stopped the fight, McGregor jumped the cage and got in Aldo's face, showing no fear to the man who was unbeaten for 8 years at this point. McGregor and Aldo went on a 12-day tour to promote the fight that would be happening at UFC 189 where McGregor went all-in on the mind games. The most famous moment was him stealing Aldo's UFC belt in Ireland. Less than three weeks before UFC 189, Aldo pulled out of the fight with a fractured rib. This delayed McGregor's opportunity to become the UFC featherweight champion. Instead of fighting Aldo, McGregor fought high-level wrestler Chad Mendes. During the fight, Mendes was able to take down McGregor multiple times. However, McGregor was able to land many body shots to slow down Mendes. Towards the end of the second round, McGregor was able to land a devastating left hand on Mendes and won the fight via TKO with 3 seconds left in the round. When the Aldo fight finally rolled after a few months later, McGregor was almost overprepared. He knocked out the greatest featherweight of all time in 13 seconds flat during their first exchange. Within months of the Aldo victory, McGregor planned to move up a weight division to fight for the lightweight title, something no one had attempted before. But when the presiding champion pulled out of the fight with a broken foot, McGregor arranged to fight another crowd favorite and longtime UFC veteran Nate Diaz at 170 pounds. This time, his confidence didn't pay off. He had put on too much weight too quickly and after winning the first round with a lovely boxing exhibition, he tired visibly in the second and Diaz capitalized, starching him with punches and winning by submission with a choke. It was a tough loss after all the momentum. Determined to get it back, McGregor faced Diaz again a few months later. McGregor vs Diaz 2 was a test for McGregor and a chance to prove he could rebound from defeat in the UFC. The fight was a back-and-forth tug-of-war but McGregor won a close decision in a beautiful showcase of heart and courage from both men. Riding high, McGregor went on to fight for the UFC lightweight title, dusting off Eddie Alvarez with a second-round knockout to make history yet again as the first-ever UFC two-weight world champion. On the 14th of June 2017, it was announced that McGregor was making his professional boxing debut against Florida. Floyd Money Mayweather. Going into the fight, Mayweather was 49-0 with a career spanning over 20 years. McGregor was going into the fight as a huge underdog but everything he had done up to this point in his career seemed impossible. There seemed a chance going into the fight that the impossible could be done and McGregor could win. McGregor fought well in the fight, however, he couldn't get the job done and lost via TKO in the 10th round. The Irishman got off to a good start winning the first few rounds but as the fight went on, Mayweather was able to take control of the fight and finish McGregor. George Foreman, Evander Holyfield, and Mike Tyson praised McGregor for his performance in the fight. McGregor reportedly received $100 million for the fight.
So where did it all go wrong for the Irishman who at one point was one of the best fighters in the world? In late 2016, McGregor was stripped off the UFC featherweight championship due to inactivity. When McGregor fought Aldo, this was the last time the Irishman fought at featherweight. In April 2018, McGregor was stripped off the UFC lightweight championship again for inactivity. His fall wasn't only due to the loss of his belts, he usually was in controversies and court cases that dampened his image. But soon enough, there was reason to tease his return to the UFC. His natural opponent was Khabib Nurmagomedov. The undefeated fighter from Dagestan who had taken over as champion of the lightweight division in McGregor's absence. Things came to a head when McGregor bizarrely attacked a bus Nurmagomedov was on ahead of UFC 223, leading to several injuries to other fighters. McGregor would later explain that he was acting to protect his teammate Artem Lobov, who was confronted by Nurmagomedov at a hotel. McGregor would be taken into custody and charged with assault for his attack, but ultimately got off relatively unscathed. And thus, the stage was set for a fight between McGregor and Khabib for the UFC lightweight title. UFC even used footage of McGregor's attack on the bus to promote the upcoming fight. At the fight, Khabib dominated McGregor, eventually forcing him to tap out in the fourth round. When the final bell rang, Khabib would leap out of the octagon and start a brawl with some of McGregor's teammates, resulting in suspensions for both fighters. Despite the loss, McGregor was expected to return to the octagon in 2019, having signed a six-fight deal with the UFC ahead of the Khabib fight. It wasn't until 2020 that McGregor made his comeback fight. He fought Donald Cerrone at UFC 246. This was the first time McGregor fought at welterweight since his rematch against Nate Diaz. Going into the fight, Cerrone had lost two fights on the bouts. McGregor completely outclassed Cerrone by knocking him out in the first round, becoming the first UFC fighter to get knockout victories in three different weight divisions. After the fight, McGregor stated he wanted to fight for UFC titles again. COVID-19 disrupted McGregor's 2020 plans and he wasn't able to get in the octagon until January 2021 when he had a rematch against Poirier. McGregor's behavior going into the fight was completely different from his behavior the first time he fought Poirier. McGregor was very relaxed and respectful with no trash talking before the fight. As the fight started, McGregor was able to land multiple strikes on Poirier but his opponent was able to land many leg kicks. As the second round started, Poirier started to put more pressure on McGregor and was able to land multiple shots. McGregor started to get backed up to the cage as Poirier was unloading on McGregor and eventually the Irishman went down and the fight was stopped. For the first time in McGregor's career, he was knocked out in MMA. This loss warranted a third fight between the pair as McGregor was hell-bent on redeeming his legacy even if it demanded him going back to the trash talk style employed in the first fight back in UFC 178. Throughout the build-up to the fight, McGregor tried as much to get in Poirier's head even crossing several lines. Now with him embodying a villain, he had no choice but to win this fight. The trilogy happened at UFC 264 and McGregor lost the fight via technical knockout in round 1 after the ringside doctor stopped the bout. McGregor had a broken tibia, which rendered him unable to continue. Since McGregor fought Mayweather in the money fight, his MMA career has been a car crash that has been surrounded by controversy. Does McGregor have the hunger for fighting anymore? Does he care enough about MMA since his greatest payday was in boxing? Will we see the Prime McGregor again, the man who fought Aldo and Alvarez? These questions will be answered in time. But right now, McGregor is seen as someone who could have been the greatest of all time. Instead, once he got some success, he didn't seem to care as much. Can you blame the man who went from receiving benefits to fighting for millions of dollars? If he fights again in the UFC, it will get a lot of attention. But will he again reach the top? If not, he may be one of the greatest disappointments in combat history. Thank you for watching this video. That's all for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell.